the five poems that uh, Shostakovich used in the 13th Symphony and tell us a little bit about their genesis and about their inspiration. Um, сначала Шостакович написал сонату на Бабе Яр, только, у него была только эта музыка. And when he, you, you need to, so they will talk uh, in English, of course. Uh, When my poem, Babier, was under attack, uh, we have, I see, was sitting at mother's home, we were playing cards. And someone called, and my wife, uh, full of uh, indignation, exclaimed, she threw uh, phone, and she said, some hooligans are calling it. What, what a kind of people. Someone called him, he named himself Shostakovich. But afterwards was a second, immediately call was repeated and she became pale and gave me and whispering it, it, it seems to me it's him for me to talk with Shostakovich who was idol of my childhood above all my uh, knowledge of he, his music was connected with my first kiss in my life because it was in Zima Junction in Siberia and I was after the school working at the little fa factory making Uh, grenades for a front and so everything was stopped because all uh, short waves radio were confiscated at that time and they said let's go to the street it was under snowfall it was terribly cold and they were playing from surrounded by germans leningrad his symphony for the first time and i was in love i was uh, nine years old and I was in love with one uh, almost adult lady. She was 10 years old. And so somehow, listening to music of Shostakovich, I kissed her. And Shostakovich liked this story. And I said, he asked me to write poem and I wrote poem finally. So when he called and he asked just my permission, he said very politely in St. Petersburg's uh, politeness, he said, Uh, dear Evgeny Alexandrovich, you know I was so, so happy to read your poem in Literaturna Gazeta. You expressed my own feelings. Could you give, be so kind to give me my permission if I could create one piece? I, I was mumbling something. I don't remember what. I was in the heaven, you know. And she said, oh, thank you very much for you. So kind to me. If you have a time, come over. I could play it. So, but it was Sonata. And when I brought Shostakovich, Sonata, uh, I brought Shostakovich my book of poetry, and probably, I don't remember how long time it was, I don't think it was more than a couple of weeks. He created symphony, he called me up and he played me all symphony. And I was on the piano being orchestra and being choir and everything. And Maxim, I think he's doing one very wrong thing. He has a tape, first performance of 13th Symphony. I offered to him if supposed, I think it has to be released because it's absolutely exceptional. But he said it's a quality of tape is not good. I, that's not a question of quality. It's a difference, some, something different. So I was surprised deeply surprised by composition because he connected absolutely incompatible poems which I even I never published this, them together in row these poems in any of my books and he gave me great uh, class of composition I could tell without such a, his courage and flexibility Uh, how he connected absolutely different places. It was the same like to wrap um, uh, red rose into beetroot leaves. That's it, what he did. But it it's also could be a beautiful bunch. So, uh, for instance, Carriera. Carriera, a, it was only one symphony when people was uh, laughing, for instance, during Carriera, or humor, and crying during Bobby Yar on very tense and quiet listening, very sad, very, very, and very concentrated in this sharp. 
карьере. So that's career how sounds, how I recited. Твердили пастыри, что вреден и неразумен Галилей. Но, как показывает время, кто неразумней, тот умней. Ученый, сверстник Галилея, был Галилея не глупее. Он знал, что вертится земля, но у него была семья. И он, садясь с женой в карету, свершив предательство свое, считал, что делает карьеру, а между тем губил ее. За осознание планеты шел Галилей один на риск и стал великим он. Вот это, я понимаю, карьерист. И так да здравствует карьера, когда карьера такова, как у Шекспира, и Пастера, Ньютона, и Толстого. Льва. So, how it was difficult to stop for him uh, this, because when I was joking, because we had not only one Толстой, different Толстойс in Russian literature, some of them were not so great and not so honest people like Толст... Лев Толстой. But so he beautifully did it with the music. И так да здравствует карьера, and so и Толстого, и Толстого, льва, 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 льва. So it was a wonderful flexibility of Shostakovich. I could tell you one thing, that I couldn't, many times I was uh, discontent with music uh, written with my uh, poems. Or it was just absolutely different view. view. Шостакович was a great reader of poetry. He understood absolutely the heart of poems. So he, uh, he was writing in the precise the style connected directly with the content. You couldn't, I couldn't imagine now different music for this uh, poetry. And initially, Shostakovich just wanted to set Baby Yar as, as one uh, symphonic poem, and then he became so excited about your work that he expanded it. Did he discuss with you um, any particular themes that he wanted you to write about? For, for a symphony, no. For this symphony, no. He, it was enough material, probably it was too much even in his hands. But we were discussing about some future project, we, projects which we didn't realize, unfortunately. He wanted to, if I will write uh, poems um, about torments of conscience. So I wrote a poem. I dedicated it, this poem to Shostakovich, but it was only um, beginning, probably. Uh, but um, It's like uh, Russian music, it's uh, like uh, he wants, uh, is based on the torments of conscience, uh, like the Russian literature. That's why they are almost in this way, they're almost twins, I mean, music and literature in Russia. So the, the poem Fears, was that written specifically for the 13th Symphony? Did no, you know? no, no. There is no any poems written specially. For he took it, uh, he took it from one magazine. But what happened with the magazine? I don't do, know. If you, uh, did you notice it? But I cut some free stanzas because I will explain the story. Shostakovich did know about it. Uh, so in the last moment, censorship stopped magazine with my poem. Editor called me up, and he said, Jenya. They saying that you are talking about the past, but um, it looks like it happens today. And um, they demand if they could give you stamp of, of, of their permission, only if you uh, just to say that now it's everything is different. It was in Khrushchev's time. Yeah, it, but it was different, really. It was different time, of course. Of course it was. We make a big step forward to the freedom. But it was not yet uh, freedom. Well, probably full freedom doesn't exist anywhere. And so, and you, but he, as he said to me, Zhenya, you, let's, let's write some 
couple of stanzas, write something, let's deceive them to, to make this poem a little bit softer in this part, to make it balance. And afterwards, you will already have a stamp of censorship. So afterwards, absolutely calmly, you will cut this unnecessary lines to print without them poem. And that time, but that time I didn't, was not yet included in one book without these lines. And just like I didn't know that I wrote specially for to get through censorship. And afterwards, it was, as it was three clumsy stances, which I, I wrote when I was forced. It was a strategic stance. And I was uh, probably about 30 years, I was tortured, or even more, tortured by them listening to them. And finally, when I went to hospital, when I was probably, as I, I could die because it was terrible bleeding because of wrong medicine, which the doctors, unfortunately, gave me. Uh, you know, I decided that I will die, and I promised Sostakovich to rewrite it with the time. And I have to fulfill it. And so I was writing it in delirium, and I did, I fulfilled that, what I promised to him. Could you read uh, the original text of, of Baba Yar for us, please? Yeah. Над бабьим яром памятников нет, Крутой обрыв, как грубое надгробье. Мне страшно, мне сегодня столько лет, Как самому еврейскому народу. Мне кажется сейчас, я иудей, Вот я бреду по древнему Египту, А вот я на кресте расстроен, Пятый гибну, и до сих пор на мне следы гвоздей. Мне кажется, что Дрейфус — это я, мещанство мой, доносчик и судья. Я растерялся, я попал в кольцо, затравленный, оплеванный, оболганный. И дамочки с брюссельскими оборками визжа зонтами тычут мне в лицо. Мне кажется, я... Мальчик в Белостоке, кровь льется, растекаясь пополам, Бесчинствуют вожди трактирной стойки И пахнут водкой с луком пополам. Я сапогом отброшен и бессилен, Напрасно я погромщиков молю под гогот. Бей, жидов, спасай Россию! Насилует лобазник, мать мою. О, русский мой народ, я знаю, ты по сущности интернационален, но часто те, чьи руки нечисты, твоим чистейшим именем брецали. Я знаю доброту моей земли, как подло, что жилочкой не дрогнув, антисемиты пышно нарекли себя союзом русского народа. Мне кажется, я — это Анна Франк, Прозрачная, как веточка в апреле. И я люблю, и мне не надо фраз, Мне надо, чтобы друг друга мы смотрели, Как мало можно видеть, обонять. Нельзя нам листьев, и нельзя нам неба, Но можно очень много это нежно друг друга в темной комнате обнять. Сюда идут, не бойся, это гулы самой совы. Весна сюда идет, иди ко мне, дай мне скорее губы, ломай дверь. Нет, это ледоход. Над бабьем шелест диких трав. Деревья смотрят грозно по-судейски, Все молча здесь кричит. И шапку сняв, я чувствую, что медленно сидею, И сам я, как сплошной беззвучный крик, На тысячами тысяч погребенных я каждый здесь расстрелянный старик. 
каждый здесь расстрелянный ребенок. Ничто во мне про это не забудет. Интернационал пусть прогремит, когда навеки похоронен будет последний на земле антисемит. Еврейской крови нет в крови моей. Но ненавистен злобой за скорузлой я всем антисемитам, как еврей. И потому я настоящий русский. Ничто во мне, ничто во мне про это не забудет. Интернационал пусть прогремит, когда навеки похоронен будет последний на земле антисемит. Еврейской крови нет в крови моей. Но ненавистен злобой за скорузлой я всем антисемитам, как еврей. И потому я настоящий русский. Good. After the, uh, the premiere of the 13th in, in December, uh, you, you said, and I quote, I have... Um, I have never seen anyone who looked like his own destiny, as Shostakovich. Did you speak to him immediately before and immediately after the premiere in Moscow? You know, uh, he was so happy, especially even not because of music, because so many were barriers, circumstances, because they, they forced... Uh, the conductor and Bravinsky to refuse conduct it. They forced the sing, different singers, blackmailing them. And so happily we had a Russian who he, he did present on all rehearsals and he remembered scored by heart. And happily we had the one young Uh, an absolutely unknown singer, Vitaly Gramatsky, who also was our reserve for last moment, because in, last, in the last moment they, uh, they forced again, but it was a planned cancellation uh, of Vedernikov. And I don't think it's, it's, it has to be a big stain on his conscience, because he agreed to participate in this planned crime or to cancel the symphony. I think that if, if he is Christian, he has to repent before his death about it. How aware were you of the, of the deep criticism that you were subjected to because of the poem uh, that accused you of, and I quote, distorting the great patriotic war, forgetting about the tragedy of the Russian people, perverting the ideas of internationalism and patriotism. Uh, one person wrote at a regular plenary session of the Russian Union of Writers, quote, our people will wipe Yetushenka from the face of the earth. How aware were you of these deep criticisms? Um, uh, of course, I couldn't say it was very pleasant, uh, but I did expect it, but it was compensated by incredible support of so many people. For instance, I've never been attacked. Only some hooligans, they scratched with uh, something, yid on the, my little car. Um, that, that was only, but nobody attacked me physically uh, on the streets or something. But I remember how uh, some uh, members of basketball team of Uh, Moscow University, they came to me, and they were, uh, sur they surrounded me for probably a couple of weeks as my bodyguards. And some people, as mom said to me, I didn't know about it that time, she afterwards, she confessed me, 
but in the uh, some nights some people was uh, sleeping or staying uh, on the my stairway stair staircase of my home uh, just uh, guarding me being my unknown guard I didn't know what I did notice them uh, but uh, some insult, yes, uh, you know, because uh, if you are insulted by anti-Semites, uh, it's not insult, it's a great, in my opinion, it's a great appreciation. Above all, it's very funny what happened with my, my mom. Uh, when she was uh, 80 years old, she was working in a kiosk near railway station in Moscow, and some anti-Semites, who invented versions that I'm hidden Jew, and I have different bloods in me, but not Jewish, absolutely not Jewish blood. But they just uh, crippled, morally crippled people, because they couldn't understand what someone could understand sufferings of other nationalities like his own uh, sufferings. And they came, they began to insult, you Jewish bitch, go back to your Israel with, with your bastards, who wrote Babi And she said to me, laughing about it, smiling about it. She said, you know, I said, why are you laughing? It's pretty unpleasant. She said, no, I was very happy because, you know, as a mother, I don't idealize you. I know all your defects like nobody else. But, you know, I was very proud. I thought, if such a bastard hates so much my son, he was something. Shostakovich um, supported you very much in his, his private letters, particularly to, to Glickman. Did he support you uh, publicly as well? Were you aware of the support that Shostakovich had towards you? Of, uh, he quotes in the letter to Glickman, that you show high patriotism, you show fervent love for the Russian people, and you show genuine internationalism. Were you aware of Shostakovich's support for you? But his, his main support was what he created music for it. You know what, what happened? It's, uh, it was a, a real um, unfair what we didn't have any, not even one big monument, we didn't have even one little sign on over the Babi or so many victims. That's why I wrote immediately poem. It took for me probably a couple, three hours to write it. Uh, because I always write uh, or out of tenderness or love or uh, out of shame. Even I don't think that I'm a political poet. I, all my so-called political poets, I write out, written out of shame for something, for my country, for other people. And so, and, uh, and he was support, it was the greatest support. So you couldn't imagine something stronger than to write me, when, obviously, immortal man, he, he supported me. He supported me in the most difficult uh, moment when I, he wrote his music. He dedicated me so much his time and his talent to my poetry. He, he, I could tell you, he immortalized me too, that's it. According to um, Galina Vishnevskaya, she says the 13th was, quote, perceived by the entire intelligentsia as a great victory of art over party politics and ideology. Is that how you saw it as well? I don't know. I, I'm not responsible for what she's saying. She's very responsible. Absolutely. He's so, you, you know, he's so, she's so uh, impulsively irresponsible what she, she, she invented this version that uh, about me that I uh, created another version of Babi Yar. And I, I never said, I, afterwards I analyzed why she did it. And I understood why. Can I uh, quote uh, from a letter from yourself, and you say, and I quote, um, after Nikita Sergeyevich Khrushchev's big speech, in which the talk focused in particular on my poem Babi Yar, I returned home and read this poem anew, and thought all over that Nikita Sergeyevich said again. And since his words were extremely friendly, after reviewing the poem, I saw that some of my standards were subjectively correct, but needed some explanation, and some supplementing in other, stand in other stanzas. 
I simply considered it my moral duty to stay up all night and work on this poem. I did not do this because I was told to, because I was instructed to. Nobody compelled me to touch this poem. It was my own deep conviction. Yeah. Was it? That was, of course, no, it, it was not like this. It was a, you know, we were in war. It was a war for freedom. Sometimes you give one little village for to take with your army a capital, you know. Because I understood once, it was ultimatum. I was responsible for the destiny of Shostakovich symphony. That's true, you know, they didn't ask me to uh, write any kind of lies. And what was their reproach? That I didn't mention some Russian and Ukrainian victims in the same grave. It was really true that there were some Russians and there were some Ukrainians, but not majority of them. In Buffalo, I was not even, even there were some Armenian girls, you know, who, who were hiding uh, some Jews, uh, Jewish uh, girls. They, uh, and I didn't write one very scrupulous article. It was just one poem. And I wrote so many poems about Russian victims of or other nationalities people. So accusation was a fake completely. And so they, uh, they just exaggerated. They, they blew, blew it up. They didn't know. They couldn't say what they are anti-Semites themselves, you know. Anti-Semites, they don't say what they are anti-Semites about themselves. But it was a clear, clear, absolutely clear uh, ultimatum. And I was really didn't sleep. All, all night, because I understood it was situation with censorship. Censorship was getting harder and harder, and I just understood if I not will add to mention Russians, Ukrainians, and something, it, it was innocent correction. It artistically, it was absolutely not necessary, but it was nothing which turned idea of poem a reverse. Nothing of it. It was just a necessary correction, but necessary for this moment. And I calculated absolutely exact, precisely, because if I could not to write these lines, few lines, symphony, 13th symphony, couldn't be performed in Russia at least for 23 years, like happened with Bobby Yarza. Bobby Yarza was not preprinted. 23 years. So in this moment, it was not I was not risking my poem. I was risking with great music of Shostakovich. And it's not true what Shostakovich was against it. He, of course, he was not happy, like me. But it was a just, you know, it's a, it was a question of the, I mean, lethargy. Letter, not it was not, could be death of the great symphony, but it was a forced lethargy, liturgy, what is in English, liturgy, liturgy, liturgy for this, for 23 years. And I predicted it and I was right. And so what I, what I did, I have no any kind of uh, feeling of guilt because and immediately, for the first time, it was possible they began, everybody forgot it, they began to come back to original text. And, and abroad, they were performing like this. In not only abroad, even in Russia, because it was what they got. Timirkanov, for instance, he told me, he was, he was, he knew this story, and he was performing without this correction. And when the first time printed by B, it was never printed, this uh, little uh, line. So it was a hypocrisy of the people. And above all, it was hypocrisy of Galina Vishnevsky, unfortunately. She's a good singer. But uh, you know what happened to her. I never said why it happened. Many, many people surprised. When I was, you know, sometimes, Many things in history, they are connected with, they are based on the very little, even funny reasons. When I was uh, 
member of jury in Venezia of film festival, once being uh, surrounded by so many reporters, other people who was who was to, to make any many they influence on me in some decisions or something. I just I didn't rec was not recognized even some people. I wasn't trying not to shake hands, not to to, to say so. So I met. The, I met one group of uh, Russians, and they called me Zhenya, like very, you know, um, very like very close friends. And I even was not looking very much who are they, but I was busy and upset and so. And so one, one woman. Ever read her like a lady, and she used it for political state. It's a funny, but it's true. It's nothing serious behind. Okay. Uh, um, in, in 1963, in May 1963, Khrushchev mentions again, and I quote, um, irresponsible statement that his poem, Babi Yar, was fervently received by the people and that he's only being criticised by dogmatists. When, when, when did you say this, and, and what were you trying to, to, I, to say? Yes, because I never, uh, I never said that Babi Yar I was wrong, was something wrong. Never said. Being even under uh, pressure, and uh, even under his uh, pressure. But he was, uh, he was just. Uh, um, his mind was distorted because by his assistants and some people who surrounded his cronies and so on. They, it was big pressure. He apologized about it. Did you Being, meet with him uh, personally, face to face? You oh yeah, oh yeah. And uh, afterwards, uh, when he was retired, I was one of very few people who congratulated, who visited him when he was retired, and he apologized for many things. But even that time, he really, because I was discussing with him, I was defending when he was very furious and he was uh, attacking our contemporary painters, I defended them. I defended them, even was going against him. And he, very strangely, but it's he, he was applauding me, it's, I remember. Despite he was very, very furious, but it was it passed. He, he, he generally he was a not bad man. I, you know, I forgive Khrushchev uh, many things because he was the first man who got, he found courage to open the gates of Gulag and to to free to make free some the uh, some survivors of Stalin's terror. That, that's a very, very interesting quote because I asked um, Maxim Shostakovich a similar question and he said that his father said that he had time for, for Khrushchev because he opened the doors of the Gulag. Yeah. Same pressure on you, on Shostakovich, as artists in the time of Khrushchev. No, no, this was completely different. No, no, no. In Stalin's time, it uh, it's, uh, could be an absolutely different situation. No. Okay. no. And tell us a little bit more about your meetings with, with Shostakovich. What was he like as a person? The, the impression we get is that he was very, very nervous and, and very worried. Is this the impression you had, the experience you had with your meetings with him? Yeah, he was, uh, uh, he was repeating uh, very often that he's a broken man. And uh, he was explaining uh, Unnecessary. I didn't ask him why he joined Communist Party, but he was repeatedly explaining why. 
And he really, what he was doing, being, uh, being a chairman of the Composers' Union, he was incredibly helpful for other people, for Tishinka, for Weinberg, for uh, uh, many others. And he did, it was sacrifice for him. He was not making career. Um, he was incredibly helpful uh, man. Uh, but once we had very tense conversation. It was a. It was in 1968 when our newspapers already they began to prepare uh, invasion to Czechoslovakia. Um, uh, it was a very frightening situation. So our newspapers, they began to publish so-called collective letters signed by workers, signed by some members of collective farms, uh, and also some intellectuals. They were uh, uh, accusing their che che Czechoslovakian intellectuals uh, in uh, insulting principle of socialism. So, tools in the dirty hands of German revanchists or something like that. Uh, it was a propaganda, it was a preparation of this invasion. And that time, once I came to he showed let ask him his names of some other composers, writers, uh, scientists. Uh, Accusing uh, Prague Springs um, in the, like uh, aggression against socialism and against brotherhood with Russia, etc. And he said, "Look, Jenny, I'm a broken man. I know you don't like when I call myself like this, but it's true." I didn't lie in any notes, but I was signed so many words, so I just, it doesn't matter if one letter or more and so on, not, oh, I'll sign it, just I, I would, I want only one thing, what they leave me in peace. And I said, you, you mustn't do it. I said, because you're, uh, you, first of all, you are, our national genius. You give very dangerous and inviting example of immoral behavior to young composers, the young crowd, all other intellectuals. If Shostakovich permits himself to be so cynical, why I couldn't permit? Exactly. It's impossible. It's a, you will corrupt future generation of Russian intellectuals. They have to be conscious of country. And the second I said, uh, and you probably will betray your own future works, no? because there is no border in our soul between our pri private work. There is nothing private. You could not make like a submarine, blind wall between different sections. If water is in one section, in other section, motor could work. And so he tear it apart. I was very happy that I saved him from this uh, to s signature. Was that the last time that you, you spoke with him in 68? No, 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 I've seen him very often. We, uh, he was inviting me on the different concerts. He and he visited all my poetry readings, all my po some hooligans are calling it. What what a kind of people? Someone called him. He named himself Shostakovich, but afterwards was a second immediately 
now Sarazesh. Correct. Why? And he. Yeah, but he was he was drinking, uh, not joyfully. He was drinking only vodka, and he was drinking very convulsively. Like he did, he didn't have a pleasure for drinking vodka. It was probably was giving him. I I said him once about it. I said that I don't think you are very happy drinking. Numb the pain? Yeah, something, you know, but he, he liked football, soccer, that's, that's true. He admired soccer. And, and he was a great, with a great pleasure, he was talking about books, he was reading a lot. Can we just hold it for two seconds? Sorry, we've got the cable wrapped up here and huh? it makes a little noise. Huh? Sorry. It's Going to raise it up just a bit. Wonderful stories. Wonderful stories. Um. Okay, if you could just pick it up from talking about the football, just the Russian football. Yeah, yes, he was uh, inflaming uh, very easily when he was talking about. He was uh, speaking about uh, uh, soccer, and um, he said what he writes after good match. He always writes composed music much better. It goes very easily. But I, it's a pity what I did, haven't seen him playing soccer. This I could not imagine. Uh, did Shostakovich ask your permission to use uh, the poem The Execution of Stefan Razin, Stanka Razin, in, in 65? Did he contact you specifically and ask for your permission to use that poem? No, he, even he, no, I, I even don't remember what he asked because we were so close already, you know. I was very often, sometimes was because, of, not because of work and reason. He just, uh, he liked me. So, and I liked him also, also. It was easy for us to talk to each other, even despite uh, some discussions. But uh, uh, he was completely open with me. Generally, with he was um, um, he divided people with whom he was completely open. He never been half open, or quarter open, or absolutely open, or Locked, like this, and for instance, he was uh, uh, he had he had you know what I never heard from him something which reminded me envy or something. He admired other composers. I remember how he asked me twice to hear Requiem, Britain's uh, Requiem. It's a long piece. It's a long piece. It's wonderful. He admired him, and he introduced me Sam Barber to. And, his, and he was supporting uh, Schnitke and other composers. Well, you, even I could not, he was always, he, he, is, he liked, he supported very much Solzhenitsyn. He un understood that, that it's, it's uh, his greatness of this man before, before he was even published, he, he read pale copy of, tape, of the tape right before it was published. And Pasternak? Did he mention Pasternak much? Mm, I don't think so. Pasternak probably was not cup of his tea. I don't know. No, it doesn't mean what he... But I, I, I don't remember what he was talking about Pasternak. Cvetaeva, he liked Marina Cvetaeva very much. That's true. And he wrote a beautiful song based on Cvetaeva. In, in 1960, you wrote a poem demanding freshness in music. Uh, do you think that, that Shostakovich offered this freshness to the new uh, generation? And do you see a parallel between what 
Shostakovich was doing in his music, the message that Shostakovich was trying to convey in his music, for what you were trying to convey in your poetry? You know, uh, probably he was not uh, thinking about it, but he opened so many ways of different possibilities for music. I think his uh, uh, music was a combination of uh, many different influences. And he absorbed, he it was a classic. Of course, he, for the st execution of Stepan Razin, uh, I think he never was uh, before uh, so close to Mussorgsky like he came. It's a, it's a wonderful music, absolutely great, great piece. Probably, it's very difficult to compare 13th Symphony and uh, this one. And we were, we were talking, we were planning with him to create uh, opera, uh, Ivan Durak, Ivan Zifo. Yeah. And that's an unfortunate didn't happen, like uh, symphony of torments of conscience. How far did those discussions get? Yeah, but we were talking, we were uh, talking many different times about it. I, I didn't become, because uh, I understood, but he, you know, he, he's, I think he was a very unsuccessful uh, with opera. Uh, his jazz compositions I like, I like very much. I think they are very graceful. But uh, in the Pareto he was not so successful. And, uh, but I like the Pareto always in my life. And um, we also were planning. He said, well, first we will make Ivan Durak, this opera. And after was probably a Pareto. I have to be rehabilitated, he said. Babi Yar obviously uh, changed your life in many ways. It thrust you onto the international scene. How did it change you as, as a poet, um, having Shostakovich take five separate poems and bring them all together? Did you then begin to reassess your ways of, of rhythm, your modes of tempo in your poetry? You are absolutely right. You, yeah, you're, uh, because I never could without, first of all, I began to, uh, to wrap uh, roses into beetroot leaves. So uh, even I began to mix up in my big poems, uh, some pieces of prose with the poetry on different, completely different topics. Uh, and, uh, and this poem, that was happened with my poem with very uh, technological title, Bratska, I guess, it's a Bratska Hydroelectropower Station. But this poem still, hit, this poem survived because it was execution of Stepan Razin, this one chapter from this poem, because it was a um, poem practically, it was like a textbook of Russian history, a poem with such a technological name. And, but only one discussion we had with Shostakovich permanently. He was a little bit dubious in the image of uh, Stepan Razin like a hero. Because he said, sometimes, you know, he said, but anyway, Evgeny Sanchez, you know, I, he did never call me Zhenya, Evgeny Alexandrovich, all very polite, uh, uh, politely. And he said, yes, but he was a killer. He was killed so many people, you know. He was in stain of blood. I am, I said, but he, well, what about Robin Hood? But that's all, that's the same, he said. He also was killing people. That sometimes it tortures me, I have some doubts in his image, like uh, probably we, uh, didn't, we, didn't we idealize one, uh, just one killer? It's a heroization of one killer. I said it probably was more complicated. I said probably, so if we idealize it, our people, Made too because there is a 
There are so many folk songs about glorifying Stepan Razin, who was a fighter against slavery and so on and, and so on. So many. This is a very controversial figure, of course, for him. Blood, blood. He was a, you know, he was not, I don't know, I don't think he was visiting church or something. He never was talking about religion, but I think he was a, he belonged to the, some people for whom their souls are their, ch their chapel. And, uh, and so all these Christian amendments were something very serious, serious for him. Some, there, there, there were some moral borders of his behavior. And to kill, this is, was, how to say, uncrossable border in his understanding of life. So that's like for Shakespeare, like for Pushkin, um, for many great people. And in this year, his centenary year, how do you assess his legacy? Um, not so much musically, but artistically and almost philosophically. How do you assess his, his legacy? He gave inviting example for everybody that any artist on any field of ours must not justify his passivity and his obedience or his commercialism by political or social conditions. So he was, he survived as a great individual, individual with his own face uh, in the times when facelessness became a face of country. He didn't give up and he was a, um, he was a, he didn't lose rebellious spirit. He was a peaceful man, but uh, he was a, it was a, he, he was a hidden rebel. And, uh, and he, sometimes, you know, what happened with him when he uh, composed one, his symphony. In the 90s, about, it was a symphony, I forgot number. I'm not, not very strong in numbers. I forgot what's the number of symphony. It was symphony dedicated to the Stalin's terror in 1937. And this symphony was interpreted by critics that's as a symphony. That's true. That's true about it's anti fascist, it's anti totalitarian generally symphony. But it was based on what happened. And so critics, some critics they misinterpreted specially. Some of them were doing uh, for to save Shostakovich. Some of them, because they want, they understood about what he wrote, but they wanted to uh, reorientate it, Russian audience. Uh, and for him, that's what he said. For he said, happily now, nobody will misinterpret my symphony, because I have your words. And they express my feelings too. So, and this was his, uh, his heroism. And when he came, for instance, in America, he was misunderstood. They forgot when they were torturing him with their political questions. They did it for showing off. They didn't imagine themselves in his shoes. Because he had all family, his family was, were hostages in his country. He couldn't. And they were asking, what do you think about party criticism? Do you think party uh, influence of party helpful in your work, etc.? 
And I think what they behaved as a, some of them probably were naive, but some of them were cynically corrupted. They were playing with the life of one man. And it was, that was, he didn't want to go to America in the Cold War. He was forced to go. So they were, uh, I mean, it's, uh, he said me once, that situation of an uh, artist in Russia, in the Soviet Union at that, that time, uh, reminds him very ancient Mongolian execution when they were bending two different trees, they were tied, uh, tied, tidying up one leg to one tree, another to another tree, and afterwards they were tearing apart the body of this man. That was his situation between West and East. 